Princess Diana was called the Royal Rebel for how often she broke with tradition and protocol, especially when it came to raising her children. Hugs in public, McDonald's instead of a royal dinner and a regular school. Today we will tell you how the princess's attitude towards her sons changed the royal family forever, because she raised William and Harry in very different ways. Which of the sons made Diana's dream of an ideal family come true? And who has already repeated her biggest mistake and ruined the lives of their children? Before the Princess of Wales became a mother in 1982, royal children grew up with distant and cold parents. So, in 1955, after six months of a royal tour of 13 countries, Elizabeth II got off the plane and greeted her little son, Charles, with a handshake. The Queen left the questions of kids' upbringing to her husband, the controlling traditionalist Philip. The strict prince had a vision of the future of King Charles, so he enrolled his son to Gordonstown School, his own alma mater. This cold Scottish boarding house left scars on Charles's gentle heart, who was fond of theatre and art. The prince did not like sports, he had little contact with people and hated those whom were the life of the party. Like his young wife, Diana. She immediately made it clear that she would raise children in her own way. Back in 1982 and 1984, when little William and Harry were born, Diana broke protocol and chose non-royal names for them. Charles chose the classic options, Arthur and Albert. Terribly old-fashioned. The princess threw a tantrum and suggested that the prince leave these as middle names. So the little princes began to be called William Arthur Philip and Henry Charles Albert. Giving children a normal upbringing was Diana's goal. She would come and watch us play football and you know, smuggle sweets into our socks. And I mean, it's like literally walking back from a football match and having sort of five packets of Starburst. She allowed Prince Charles to help their sons with aristocratic hobbies, hunting, fishing, and polo. But she kept all the fun for herself and often took her sons to amusement parks in London, which were full of vacationers. Therefore, Charles's sons, Harry and William, grew up to be bigger tomboys than he was. Both happily joined the army and went in for sports. They had many friends, like their mom, Lady D. Because the boys imbibed Diana's spirit so much and got along so well with the Queen and his father, Charles was not close to them as children. They were the complete opposite of him. On the other hand, Diana tried to force her husband to spend at least an hour a day with the kids, but then it came down to half an hour, then to 15 minutes, and then the boys saw the prince only in the evening at 9.15. Neither William nor Harry forgave his coldness. If you suffered, do everything you can to make sure that whatever experiences you, negative experiences that you had, that you can make it right for your kids. Dee wanted to be the complete opposite of her husband and his family, she hugged them in public, right in front of the cameras. Princess took baby William on a tour of Australia and New Zealand when he was not yet a year old. 25 years later, Meghan Markle will do the same, she and Prince Harry will take the newborn Archie on a tour of Africa. Subscribe, hit the bell, and watch further to find out. Did Charles's coldness or Diana's rebelliousness influence Princes Harry and William so much? After all, this is what will soon destroy the royal family. In the meantime, let's talk about what Harry and William like as fathers. At first glance, they're perfect. They repeat their mother's parenting style. Diana put children to bed every night, her sons now do the same. By the way, she would very much approve of the parenting tactics of Meghan Markle. Diana did not trust children to nannies and was always by their side. And Harry's wife spent almost the entire tour of South Africa with Archie, while Harry attended meetings and receptions. Moreover, she asked her mother, Dory Ragland, to move in with the couple and help with the newborn. Because he's getting into more throwback shows, like Magic School Bus. Who would have thought? He thinks it's great. And so that's been pretty fun to sort of see it again through his eyes. William and Kate followed Princess Diana's lead when they took nine-month-old Prince George on their Down Under tour. A few years later, the couple took Princess Charlotte to Canada when she was just two years old. Recently, as part of Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee celebrations, Prince George and Princess Charlotte accompanied their parents to Wales on their first official visit. It was an important moment for George, who would become Prince of Wales in the future. The new Princess of Wales, Catherine, manages the kids' schedules and does all the housework. Just like Diana. Of course, since her engagement to William in 2010, Kate has constantly been compared to Lady D. Therefore, Middleton spends time with children outdoors at their favorite cottage in Norfolk or Windsor Castle, where they ride bicycles. Kate chose a school for her three kids the way Diana did in the 90s. Well, obviously it'd be 
Um, I would love to have met her. Um, and and she's obviously, she's, a, she's an inspirational woman to, to look up to. And, you know, very inspirational. So, um, yeah, I do. William and his wife enrolled all the children in Lamrook School, where they would attend classes during the day and taken home by their parents at night. Harry and Meghan's children will also be attending a private school in California and be at home with their parents at all times. Dee started this tradition because her husband and his family were homeschooled before. In the early 90s, the princess chose the Montessori school for her sons, where she herself once worked, and then the Weatherby Preparatory School. Thanks to this, the boys have socialised from an early age. I'm sure she's longing for me, for me to have kids and she, so she can be a grandmother again. But, um, you know, I, I, I hope that, once again, that everything we do privately and, and officially, that, that it makes her proud. But Diana was not just a mother, she was a princess and raised the future king, William. She saw how the rest of the family treated him, as a better one. Harry has always been number two. The Queen Mother did not even sit next to him at the receptions. So Dee was often especially strict with her eldest son but spoiled Harry much more, as she felt sorry for him. When William was a teenager, his mother forced him to clean their cars to earn pocket money. Lady Dee took seven-year-old William to a homeless centre and showed by example how to behave with subjects, starting with William's first official public appearance at ten years old. She said then, It only may be ten seconds out of your life, but it could be years of happy memories for the person you meet. Harry, on the other hand, was allowed to remain a child longer, away from royal duties. Mom not only reminded William of his royal duty, but also often trolled her son. The most embarrassing thing was when Diana saw posters of supermodels in her son's room and decided to introduce him to them. Cindy Crawford, Christy Turlington and Naomi Campbell were waiting for the shy 13-year-old when he returned from school. When the guy saw them, he almost fell out of stairs. Or was it a cruel joke or an attempt to make her son more confident in dealing with girls? After all, his father, Prince Charles, went to all-boy school and did not know how to deal with women. How could he teach this to his son? Especially since his marriage to Dee was a complete disaster. He cheated on the mother of his children for many years, and after her death, he married his mistress, who has become the queen instead of Princess Diana. What was it like for Harry and William to witness this? Moreover, when the princes found their wives, Charles interfered in their marriages. For him, Kate was the perfect princess, but Meghan wasn't. He was worried his grandson from Markle would be too dark-skinned for their family. Well, definitely far more dangerous because then you add race in, and you add social media in. And when I'm talking about history of itself, I'm talking about my, my mother. No wonder Harry did not want to give his children titles and take them to royal celebrations. In 2020, when Archie was only nine months old, Harry and Meghan stepped down as the senior royals. The couple moved to the States, as Diana dreamed of back in 1995. Yes, before her divorce from Charles, Lady Dee wanted to take her sons to America and raise them as ordinary children. However, she changed her mind because they were heirs to the throne and would then lose all royal privileges. Diana herself lost everything after the infamous BBC interview with Martin Bashir. She then told everything, her husband's infidelities, health problems, and wanting to give her children a normal life. In 2021, her son will give the same interview to Oprah, where he confessed that his father even stopped picking up the phone from him. After Megxit, Charles cut off Harry and his children, abolished the royal security and is about to strip their titles. What can make the new king change his mind and make peace with his son? To save the royal family.